Hi everybody, it's Neil Hagberg, Director of Tennis Life Camps at Gustavus, with our last of the summer series this year of, uh, of Wednesday Reflections with a song. And uh, I want to tell you about our Gratitude Minute. Our Gratitude Minute at Tennis and Life Camps started a few years ago. And what happens is you can be in the middle of anything. You can be in the middle of a point. You can be in the middle of a drill. You can be in the middle of a water break. And one of our staff members goes up to the tower overlooking all the courts with a bullhorn and out comes gratitude minute, gratitude minute, and boom, everybody drops. All of this action, all of this noise becomes silence. And an entire camp is looking up at the sky. If they're lying on their back or if they're sitting down cross-legged, they're looking wherever they're looking. And for one minute, we all sit or stand or lie down and think about what we're grateful for. So to start this video, we're gonna do a gratitude minute. Something I've been told by many people, do not do because you're going to lose them if you have a minute of silence. And the thing is, I lose you when I'm talking. So it really doesn't matter. So we're gonna do it. Want you, wherever you're at right now, if you're sitting in your office, if you're on the lawn, if you're in your car, as long as you're not driving, if you are uh, in your home, wherever you are, in whatever position you want to be, lying down, sitting up, we're going to take one minute. And during that minute, I want you just to think about everything that you're grateful for. Let the images go past. All right, here we go. Gratitude Minute. And by the way, I will stop you when it's time. Don't worry. Gratitude Minute, Gratitude Minute, go. And there you have it. Wake up. That's what my daughter used to say all the time when she was a little toddler and she'd come into the bedroom and she'd go, wake up. And that's what a gratitude minute does. It wakes us up to see things that we had forgotten. So, Michelangelo said at age 86, I am still learning. And if it's good enough for Michelangelo, it's good enough for me at age 61. We have just been through and are continuing to go through one of the most difficult crises in the country, in the world. Every one of us has lost a lot. Every one of us has grieved. Every one of us has been uncertain, scared maybe, anxious. Some of us have been depressed. It's been a tough time for the world. It's been a tough time for you. It's been a tough time for me. It's been a tough time for all of us. So, what have you learned? What do you learn during this time? I'm going to tell you the things I'm grateful for, for what I have learned during this time of COVID and especially during this summer of no camps. The unexpected sadnesses, the unexpected joys. Maya. Maya taught me, Maya taught me that a rainbow made of chalk 
by a 10-year-old is more beautiful and gives more hope and joy than a rainbow in the sky. The grass is green. The sky is blue. It's a great day to be alive. AJ taught me that apparently aliens play tennis. Because when Barb Wilkinson did her smiley face video uh, at the beginning of the summer, teaching you how to do your own smiley faces, this is what AJ came back with. Catherine taught me that TLC lives on even without camps in senior pictures. Steve, my boss at Gustavus, taught me to make all my plans as if they were going to occur and then count on none of them occurring. That was maybe the best advice I got all summer. Let it go. Raman, a former TLC instructor and um, Gustavus All-American, taught me that no victory is worth giving up one's integrity for. Barb Wilkinson taught me that as long as there is a smiley face and someone to apply it, there will always be a TLC. Leandra, my spouse, taught me over and over and over in these last five months that love is more powerful than fear. My daughter Madeline taught me that when you're tired of being sad and when you are weighed down by all the losses in your life, look outside yourself and do something kind for others. Karen Gibbs taught me that when things go wrong and suffering compounds, the question to ask is not, why me? But rather, what can I do next? Paul taught me to whisper Three crowns, three crowns, three crowns. Whenever I'm in danger of losing perspective of what is important. Kevin and Kins taught me that when you accept what you cannot change, you can let go of a great burden and then you can create amazing things in its place. Janet taught me that privilege is not a bad thing or a good thing. It just is what we're born with. And once we become aware of it, it is our choices that will make good or bad come out of it. Jane taught me to laugh. So this, uh, this, this New Yorker uh, cartoon she sent, and you can see it, I, th I think, I don't know if it's big enough for you to see or not, so I'm gonna describe it to you. There's uh, a, a young boy with his pup tent set up in the living room, and he's got uh, a hot plate in front of him, with a can of beans and a spoon, and he is not looking very happy, and his cell phone is to his ear. And five feet away is his mom in the other room, you can see them both there, talking to his dad, who is reading a book, and saying, Eric's calling from camp again. And <laughs> I, don't know, I don't tell it well, but I laugh so hard. We don't have you here. 
you're probably camped out in your living room. Thank you, Jane. Joseph taught me that you can take TLC anywhere you go, even when camps are canceled. Okpara taught me that the courage, the courage to do what is right is not always popular. And that's okay. Ali taught me that shame is one of the greatest obstacles to us having empathy for others and learning from them and listening to them. And when we put that shame aside, we can actually interact with them. Mason taught me that telling one's own story is the quickest way still to the heart of the matter, to the heart of others, and to the heart of change. Natalie taught me there is a proper grip, Eastern forehand, for a TLC name tag. Who knew? You gotta go back and watch these. Liz taught me that what is in your tennis bag is in life. And you would better find some fun in there or it ain't gonna be worth it. Tom taught me what it means to really listen and serve. I taught me that it's okay to ask for help over and over and over. And I've had to do that in these last months. And when I do, help is there. And finally, Seth taught me it is not tennis or life that was missed most this summer. It was slushies. I am still learning. And I hope you are too, because folks, we have some more heartaches ahead of us. We're not through it yet. But we can continue to say, gratitude minute, gratitude minute. And we can get through this together, and we will. And we will gather together again. Thank you, all of you. I-T-H-A and K-Y-O-U, I thank you. W-H-A-T-Y-O-U, what you do. G-R-A-T-E-F-U, a great for me, for I owe you in the way you L-O-V-E -E me, in this big old battle W-O-R-L-D, there's never enough G-R-A-T-I-T-U-D-E, but I got big old E-Y-E-S-I-S-C, -E -S 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 see what your G-I-V-I-N-G given, given to me, so I-T-H-A-N-K-Y-O-U, I thank but W-H-A-T-Y-O-U, what you do. G-R-A-T-E-F-U, a great for me. Oh, I owe you in the way you L-O-V-E me. This world has got lots of T-R-O-U-B-L-E, it's true. But all of it seems to just F-A-D-E when I'm here with you. When I get down and I'm feeling so B-L-U-E, yes, blue. You reach out to me and I L-O-V-E. I love you. I T H A N K Y O U. I thank you for W H A T Y O U. What you do? G R A T E F U. A great for me. For Y O U in the way you L O V E me. For Y O U in the way you L O V E.
thank you. Go do some gratitude minutes with the people you love and tell them today that you're grateful for them. Until next time.